Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. We've got a viewer writing in uh, inquiring about uh, not only a body upgrade, but uh, Yong New, hope I'm saying that right, lenses. Um, Yong New is that manufacturer that's made some really good um, speed lights and flashes over the, over the years. Uh, good competitors at a much better price to OEM stuff. However, uh, now they're into... Um, lenses the 50s you can get a canon 50 and a nikon 50 and they got a few others now too uh diva writes in i hope i'm saying that right he says hi matt i'm diva from india i love your videos i've been following your youtube channel for a few years you're doing a great job i need to know does the young new yn50 f18 lens work well on a nikon d5600 i have this question because one of my friends said that the autofocus isn't working on the d5600 with some lenses which works on full frame nikon dslr could you also suggest or send me a cheat list uh, kind of thing for choosing a good DSLR? I don't have a DSLR. I use my friends. I'm planning to buy a full frame body. I'm doing wedding and events for a living, but I need a camera for landscape, wildlife, and street photography. Could you suggest me a crop body and two full frame bodies with lenses that I should have? From your videos, I've shortlisted the Nikon D7200, Fuji X-T20, and the D750. Can I choose from one of those, uh, or do you have any better suggestions? Please let me know, waiting for your reply. Thank you. Well, thanks for your question. Interesting question. I haven't actually shot the Yongnu 50 F1.8. Um, I was just doing some digging around on the internet because my initial thought was it was modeled after the 50 AFD lens. Uh, but a lot of people online, when you look in the Q&A on uh, B&H and on some of the other listings, are saying that it does autofocus on the 5600. I thought it didn't have the built-in autofocus motor. Honestly, can't speak to that because I haven't tried it myself. Um, the reason I haven't is I probably should because I like 50s. It is less expensive, but you do pay some penalties. I don't think it's as sharp. We've seen that in, in some tests and a lot of examples online. It's also been shown to not have the same level of control over flare and ghosting and things like that in your images. So for me, since I love 50s so much, and they're not an expensive lens to begin with, I mean, the F1.8G is not that expensive, uh, I would probably go with the, oh, I would, I would go with the Nikon. That's what I have done. I currently, uh, one of my favorite Nikons is my little Nikon F1.4, the 50 F1.4 AFD. So it wouldn't work on your 5600 for autofocus either because it's a D lens, but uh, the newer version is the G, obviously. Um, so I would want to confirm that. Easiest way to confirm that is if you can take your 5600 into a camera store if that has the Yongnu, put it on your body and see if it works. Uh, from what I'm reading, it seems to indicate that it does, uh, but I can't speak to that from firsthand experience. I can say as I said, there are reasons why I haven't had one in yet. Maybe I should get one in just to test it just for fun. But I, I can't imagine myself wanting to keep one because for the little bit of extra money, I would go to the Nikon, which is optically just a much better lens. So that would be my recommendation to you unless you just simply can't afford it. Uh, in which case, anything's better than nothing. You get a fast prime. As far as your um, request for full frame and um, crop body recommendations, uh, I would look at the... D800 as an option to the D750. It's older uh, now, and I know, I'm know i not sure about in your area of the world, but certainly in Canada and um, in the United States, you can get an 800 now for about the price of a 750, and I would rather have the 800. I'd rather have the extra resolution, and I like that body. 750 is a great camera, don't get me wrong. If that's what your heart is set on and 24 megapixels is enough for you, then by all means. Just for me, I would go with the 800 or even an 810 if I could get one used at a good price. I just really like the camera. I like the little bit extra resolution, or I shouldn't say a little bit, 12 more megapixels. It's a 36 versus um, 24. And if you don't need the 36, you can always deal with that in export um, from Lightroom or whatever program you're using. But you've got it if you need it. And I just, I really like it. They're like power files. So I would look at, at um, those bodies. And I would look at either a 7100, a 7200, or a 7500. Um, the 7500, if you're wanting to do more video, um, then I would look at the 7500. Uh, but the 7100 or 7200 as an option because not I, I love the X-T20. It's a great little camera, but do you really want to be straddling two systems? It's, it's expensive to do that because you're replicating lenses in the same range. So that was my why I'm recommending looking at the 7100 or the 7500 or even the 7200 as well. Big difference between the 7200 and the 7100 is 
Um, and it's not really a big difference. It's a deeper shot buffer. If you're shooting sports or wildlife, it can, it can clear the memory faster. So the frames per second, you can shoot faster, basically. So the shot buffer is deeper. Uh, so short of that, if you don't really need that, the 7100 is actually the better value right now. It's a great camera. Uh, but that's what I would look at doing because for me, I wouldn't really want to be straddling two systems unless you're really price insensitive about that because it's going to cost you extra money. Um, whereas you can, you can overlap lenses. If, it's all, if you're all Nikon, if you're with Fuji, you're not really going to be able to do that. So again, not knocking the X-T20. It's a great camera. Love it. Great lenses. Love that 18-55 to 55 kit lens. Just not sure I would, well, for me, I wouldn't want to straddle the two systems. Um, you may, that might not be an issue, in which case, by all means, uh, the 800, the 810, or the 750 for full-frame cameras, and, and the X-T20 if you don't mind straddling two systems. If you hadn't thought about the, the cost effects of straddling two systems, then go with the 7100, the 7200, or the 7500. Again, the 7500 if you're more interested in video. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Um, and actually, I'm going to throw it to you guys. Uh, who's shot or owns the Yongnu, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, 50mm F1.8 uh, for Nikon here? We want to know if it shoots on a non-motor drive body such as the 5600, the 5500, the 3400, 3300, 3200, one of the bodies that doesn't have a motor drive. Um, we want to know if it works for that. And what do you think of it? What do you think of the quality? What do you think of the optics? Were you disappointed? Were you happy with it? Didn't want to spend the extra money on the, on the Nikon lenses? And, uh, and then secondary to that, body choices. Do you agree with me on the 800 and the 750? Um, what do you think about straddling two systems? Let me know what you guys have to say about that. Let's help out our viewer here. Leave it in the comments below what you would do and why. Always great to get your feedback rounding out the discussion. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your question. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at rtheimage.com.